Welcome guys to another episode of F1 Driver Ratings where today we're going to rate the drivers based on their 2019 Russian Grand Prix by looking at how they did during qualifying and the Grand Prix and a race weekend that was not really that exciting but still we've got to rate the drivers anyway. So if you want to find out from me in this video who did well and who underperformed then make sure to check out this video. Let's first go to Mercedes. Now for Lewis Hamilton, I think Lewis did a very good job in qualifying. He did absolutely the best he could by somehow getting on the front row. And in the race, even though his pace was not that special, it was mostly because the medium tyres in the first stint were not really working out. And yes, he did get lucky, but still had to drive well. And I think most of it at the very least was a good weekend for Lewis Hamilton in terms of how he drove considering that his car was not the quickest. So for me, Lewis Hamilton gets a 7 out of 10. Valtteri Bottas though gets a 5 out of 10. The reason he only gets a 5 is because in qualifying he was so awful compared to teammate Lewis Hamilton. He was miles behind in qualifying. And then in the race, the only reason... He was moderately good is because he literally pulled a Rubens Barrichello and completely held up Charles Leclerc so Lewis Hamilton could win the race and so Valtteri Bottas could complete a 1-2 for the team. That's the only reason Valtteri gets a 5 out of 10 because his speed and his qualifying performance was shocking. But good news for Mercedes is that they're only one 1-2 finish away from another Constructors World Championship. Now on to Ferrari and they had a very controversial Russian Grand Prix weekend in qualifying. Everything seemed great but in the race it all fell apart as usual for Ferrari. First off for Charles Leclerc in qualifying he was clearly the best driver out there. Yes he did have the best car when it came to qualifying but he was so dominant over the rest of the field. But the reason Charles Leclerc will only get a 7 out of 10 is because in the race, he was not as quick as his teammate Sebastian Vettel and in my opinion did not drive anywhere near as well as he did in qualifying. As for Sebastian Vettel, it was a quite dramatic weekend. In qualifying, he didn't do that well because he should have put that car on the front row but he didn't, he qualified in P3. But then in the race, once Sebastian Vettel got into the lead, Ferrari were trying to deploy Sebastian Vettel in a Rubens Barrichello style way. Instead though, Sebastian Vettel became Michael Schumacher after he took the lead. Leading Charles Leclerc to becoming Fernando Alonso with the team radio messages we got. But you have to say no matter what the plan was or what the team orders were, Sebastian Vettel in the race did drive better than Charles Leclerc but in qualifying was not as good. So both Ferrari drivers are going to get a 7 out of 10. And this really is now a partnership that is starting to get a bit tetchy. The Red Bull wasn't the most dramatic weekend for Max Verstappen. I think he did the best he could with the car he was given in qualifying. He did very well to put it on the second row of the grid. Of course, even though he had to start from P9 on the grid. And then in the race, did the best he could and finished in P4. And because of that, and because we didn't really get to see what Max could have done if he started from 4th on the grid... Max Verstappen gets a 7 out of 10. Alex Albon though is only going to get a 3 out of 10 from me and I'm going to explain why. So of course his crash in qualifying was a big, big no-no for Red Bull and himself in terms of him trying to impress the team in getting a seat at the Red Bull team. But also his pace compared to his teammate Max Verstappen was not good enough during the weekend. And let's be honest, the only reason... He finished in P5 was because of the safety car. If there was no safety car around lap 30, he would not finish in P5 because he was not that quick. And I think mostly it was not a good weekend for Alex Albon. So it might seem harsh, but I'm going to give him a 3 out of 10. And quite frankly, in my opinion, time is running out for Albon to impress Red Bull for 2020. For Renault, it was another typical weekend for them in 2019, where in qualifying they are great, and in the race they don't get the points they should. Nico Hülkenberg, though, was clearly the best driver at Renault during the Russian Grand Prix weekend. He was very good in qualifying, could have got on to P7 in qualifying, but in the race was, I think, a bit unlucky. Also, the pace for the Renault in the race was not quite there, but he was a bit unlucky of how the pit stop really did cost him a bit of time. 
So I'm going to give Nico a 6 out of 10. He wasn't great, but he definitely did deserve more from his weekend. Daniel Ricciardo, though, gets a 5 out of 10 because he was clearly slower than Nico Hulkenberg during the weekend. And he didn't really do anything that well in Russia. Yes, he had contact at the start with Giovinazzi and Grosjean that maybe he couldn't do that much about. But his speed was really lacking during the entire weekend. And considering that we didn't really get to see what he could have done in the race, I'm going to have to give him a 5 out of 10. But for Renault, for sure, their battle for P4 in the Constructors is dead. McLaren, though, had another good weekend in 2019. And for me, the best driver of the weekend consistently through qualifying and the race was Carlos Sainz. Who I'm going to give an 8 out of 10 for because... One, he basically won the Formula 1.5 race in qualifying. And then in the race, he was clearly the quickest person from the midfield. And again, if it wasn't for that safety car around lap 30, Carlos Sainz absolutely would have finished in P5 and Albon would not have beaten him. And I thought what Carlos did in Russia was fantastic for McLaren. Lando Norris, though, he only gets a 6 out of 10. One, because his qualifying could have been slightly better, but also in the race. Even though he was unlucky with how the safety car did ruin his race result, his pace could have been better at certain times, especially in the final part of the Grand Prix. Where if I'm not mistaken, he was holding up Nico Hülkenberg and also Lance Stroll. Still though, it was a good weekend. He wasn't poor or bad. But he could have done better in my opinion. But again when it comes to P4 and the Constructors. McLaren have it absolutely sealed. And next up is Alfa Romeo. And what a terrible weekend Alfa Romeo had. The car had no speed. And the drivers didn't exactly do the best they could during the weekend. For example Antonio Giovinazzi. Even though in qualifying I thought he did alright in the race. It wasn't great was it? Contact on the first lap and his speed after that was not exactly amazing to get back into the proper race in the midfield. So for me, Antonio would have to get a 5 out of 10. Kimi Raikkonen though gets a 3. 1 because in qualifying he was not good enough. But 2 because he committed the worst jump start in history. He jumped the start almost 5 seconds before the lights went out. Clearly his age is getting to him. Maybe he's been out doing this a bit too much. Who knows? But it was an awful weekend for Kimi Raikkonen. And hopefully we don't see this for the rest of 2019. Because we know that Kimi Raikkonen, once everything is going his way, can really get back on it. So hopefully things after Russia start to go his way. But yet he gets a 3 out of 10 from me. But for Alpha, their season is basically over because they cannot now... Go and catch teams like Renault and Toro Rosso, in my opinion, in the Constructors. Hasto, for a change, actually had a good weekend. Roman Grosjean, for example, was actually quick in qualifying. And if he actually stayed in the race after the first lap contact, maybe he would have finished in the points like his teammate Kevin Magnussen did. I will say, though, he came out with an absolute perler of a comment after the Russian Grand Prix saying that Drivers could be more gentlemanly on the first lap. How ironic is that? That's like Pastor Maldonado becoming a spokesperson for safety for the FIA. Or Ferrari thinking that the FIA are biased against them. Read up on your history kids because the FIA have been very closely tied at times with Ferrari. And it's also like Nico Rosberg after qualifying in Italy talking about Nico Hülkenberg deliberately going off the track and doing a fake lockup. Because of course, he would know everything about that, wouldn't he? Please, Roman, do not talk about being more gentlemanly at the start when you are literally the person who was banned in 2012 for crashing too much on the first lap. Roman, though, I thought had a good weekend, so I'll give him a 6 out of 10. Kevin Magnussen also gets a 6 out of 10 because his weekend was kind of similar. Qualifying... He didn't quite get the best out of the car, but in the race, he was so, so impressive. Getting right into the top 10 straight away. Fighting away with drivers like Perez and Hülkenberg. And 
I think it was a bit of a shame he got his penalty in the end, but still was deservingly getting points for Haas F1. There were 6 out of 10 for both, but great news is that I think Haas are now really starting to get on top of the problems they had earlier on in 2019. For Toro Rosso, or as next year it might be called Alpha Tori, Toro Rosso had a kind of throwaway weekend. Pierre Gasly, we knew coming into this race, had a 5 place penalty for a new ICE. He did well to qualify in P11, but with that car, in terms of the pace of it during the Russian Grand Prix weekend, he was never really going to do anything with it in terms of being able to start from a grid position that was actually considered good. And Daniel Kvyat, the home driver, had a weekend from hell where he seemingly had no luck whatsoever. He had reliability issues in practice 1, practice 2, practice 3, and he didn't even do qualifying. And quite frankly, did well to even be in the race and actually beat his teammate. So because of that, both drivers get a 5 out of 10. Hopefully things improve at the engine supplies home race at Suzuka. And the final midfield team is Racing Point, and Racing Point didn't have the best weekend, but still came away with good points. Both drivers in qualifying could have done better, Perez could have improved his lap more to get into the top 10, and Lance Stroll made a couple big errors on his qualifying lap. Perez though did nicely to then go on and get into the points and finish in P7. Stroll had a better race, but it wasn't quite good enough to finish in the top 10. So Perez gets a 6 out of 10 and Stroll gets a 4. And I'm just going to give both Williams drivers a 5 out of 10 for simply not quitting driving that car. But guys, let me know in the comments section down below. For the drivers, what do you think of my ratings of the drivers? And what would you rate the drivers based on qualifying and the race for the Russian Grand Prix? And please remember guys, the ratings for this is based on qualifying of the race. Not earlier stuff in 2019 or stuff from the past. The ratings have to be based on qualifying and the race for the Russian Grand Prix. So let me know in the comments section what you think. And also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget to hit the like button as well. And guys, I will be back with Nib on Saturday at 3pm UK time live on the channel for our 50th episode of the podcast. Where in that podcast episode, we are going to fully detail how Ferrari lost the Russian Grand Prix and the implications of what happened. So until then guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.